Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to discuss something uh, that kind of happened to me recently on social media. Um, I know I've been talking a lot about social media lately because I've been on there a little too much. Um, but I wanted to clarify something um, because I did, I think I retweeted um, something regarding uh, self-diagnosis and that kind of thing. Um, my previous video, um, or should be one of my previous videos, talks about um, being an armchair MD and why this can be dangerous. And so what I tweeted addressed the dangers of self-diagnosis. Now, I think the big issue and the reason why a lot of people um, were bothered by what I had put was because there is there, there wasn't a clear definition between self-diagnosis and self-advocacy. And I think they are two very different things. And a lot of people were, you know, getting angry and saying, you know, they had to look up, you know, what was wrong with them and they had to research it and they had to investigate it on the internet and they had to go and tell their doctors. And it's like, yes, that, that's a common experience for all of us, especially those of us with rare conditions um, or, or very difficult to treat chronic illnesses. It's, you know, it was bizarre having people tell me like, this was my experience. And it's like, well, yeah, that was my experience as well. It's a very similar experience. But I think the clarification between self-diagnosis and self-advocacy is what was needed in that conversation. So when I say something like self-diagnosis, when you're being an armchair MD and self-diagnosing, you're basically saying, no, this is what I have. I don't care if doctors are telling me that I have something else or that, you know, that's just part of my condition or whatever. This is what I have. And I have seen a lot of that. Um, and I'm not saying that those people don't have the conditions that they say they have, but they've been diagnosed maybe with one or two things and they've just decided to self-diagnose themselves with everything else um, without really, you know, without really having a proper diagnosis from a physician. And on top of that, people who self-diagnose also tend to self-treat. So I, I think I spoke about this in the armchair MD video where people, you know, I've known people that go to like Mexico and they pick up medications and stuff to self-treat or they'll, you know, take herbal supplements that they pick up at the store and, and they go, okay, well, this is going to be my treatment protocol. Um, I've also known people that refuse treatment. Um, so this is kind of like, it, it, self-diagnosis isn't just saying, oh, I have this condition and I'm going to treat it. It's also saying, no, I don't have what the doctor is telling me that I have. And I don't want the treatment that's being offered because I want, you know, I say that I have this other thing. Um, and I have known people like that as well. I remember one gentleman that I spoke with um, who needed to be on the medication that I'm actually on right now for an immune deficiency. And it was actually his blood work show that he had an immune deficiency. And we actually had the same doctor um, or he had the doctor that I have. He went and saw her and just didn't like what she was telling him and was just like, OK, I, I don't want to see her anymore because she told him he had to be on that medication, among other things. And so he was like, nope, that's not what I want, and just moved on. Um, and, and these are chronically ill people. I'm not saying that these aren't um, actually sick people. These are all very sick people. And, you know, I think a lot of the accusations that were thrown at me were people were assuming that I was referring to non-sick people or people outside of these communities that were sort of infiltrating and, and making things worse for the rest of us. And, and, and no, these are people within these communities. There, there's a lot of us and we are all very, very different. And we all, our struggles are, are very different, even if we have the same condition. Um, but there are some people that simply have decided that they know better than their doctors and they're going to handle it themselves. That's what I mean by self-diagnosis. Um, you know, it's not just self-treatment or saying, well, I have this and I don't care what the doctors say. It's also denying that they have what the doctors have told them that they have. 
Um, and yeah, that, I've also kind of gone through that where I was diagnosed with one condition and I said, no, that's not it. Like that, that's, you know, and it was there, it was on paper and it was, you know, real. And I was like, that's not it for me. And this is what brings me to self advocacy. Self advocacy is a different, um, it, it's a, it's a different dynamic. And when you advocate for yourself, yes, you're researching conditions and, you're trying to put your symptom profile together and figure out what it is that you have that causes all these symptoms. Sometimes it's one condition, sometimes it's many conditions. Um, but you do go to doctors, right? You do take your information to doctors and you say, hey, look, I, I found this and I'm wondering if this could possibly be it. That's self-advocacy because you are still going to doctors. Um, people that self-diagnose eventually stop going to doctors or they doctor shop a lot, which is something that I have seen as well. They, they'll go to a doctor and if that doctor doesn't agree with them, then they'll go to a different one. And they go through through many different doctors um, searching for what they want to hear. But with self-advocacy, you're taking your information to your doctor or your, your team of doctors and you're saying, look, I think this might be it. Right. Or I think, you know, what do you think about this? You're actually checking in with the doctor and asking for their opinion. And there is a difference, you know, between self-advocacy and just saying, you know what, I, the doctors aren't telling you, you know, I know better. And we at the end of the day, we we know our bodies, but we don't um we're not doctors, unfortunately. I mean, some of us are. There are some chronically ill people that are doctors and, you know, they've helped to sort of change, you know, the dynamic between doctors and patients because they know what it's like to be on both sides. But, you know, th there's a, a clear difference. And um, I think that was what led to a lot of the confusion, a lot of anger, a lot of hostility, I was called ableist, I was called racist, I was called class, I mean, I was called every name in the book, and um, I'm not even sure why, because I, I didn't see that there was anything, you know, it was an opinion, and also based on my own experience with, with myself and with different people in my community, or my chronic illness community, um, and you know, if you saw my, my conspiracy theory video, um, you know, people were, were getting angry at me because they said that I was sort of accusing chronically ill people of being anti-vax and, and conspiracy theorists. And I was like, I'm not accusing anybody. There are a lot of chronically ill people that are anti-vaccine and that believe in conspiracy theories. And that's something that has, has sort of blown up with the whole, the whole COVID thing. And so it became this like, you know, I'm targeting chronically ill or disabled people and accusing them of, of this whole anti-vax thing. And I'm like, no, this, a lot of the elements of the anti-vax movement um, came from, you know, autism and, and the, the conspiracy theory surrounding autism. And a lot of the lab leak theory came from Lyme disease and a lot of the conspiracy theories surrounding Lyme disease. Um, but I think a lot of people, when I said the, the, those communities that came from those communities, they took it to mean that those communities were spreading these falsehoods. Um, and the community itself is not, but there are a lot of members in those communities that actually are, you know, pushing these, these weird theories uh, or jumping onto the anti-vax conspiracy theory bandwagons. Um, and that's not something that I'm making up or I'm throwing an empty accusation. I've actually had to block a number of, of people from the Lyme disease community because they have become hardcore anti-vaxxers um, and, and also, you know, buying into the conspiracy theories because that's already something that we were exposed to being in the Lyme community. And now it's just, you know, being recycled and, and thrown into the whole COVID thing. So... I wanted to make that distinction because I, I, I still don't feel like self-diagnosis is great because I have met, like I said, I've met a number of people that really, really need medical attention and just, um, 
they they refuse doctors help uh, when when their blood work is showing that they need it when you know when they're clearly in need of medical attention and they're just refusing it and uh, a lot of us do self advocacy which is fine because we're actually going to doctors and checking in with doctors and and sort of sharing our notes and yeah and it still takes many 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 years to get a diagnosis even with all of that um and you know there's nothing wrong with self-advocacy there's nothing wrong with believing you may have a certain condition um but you know the 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 dynamic that i'm referring to is just people that yeah, I mean, we, we have every reason not to trust doctors, but unfortunately in this country, you, ha- you don't have access to medication or treatment without the diagnosis of an MD. And one of the things that we do sort of have to make peace with and that I had to make peace with was that the doctors were my allies or I had to treat them as if they were my allies and not my enemies. And unfortunately, if we're busy self-diagnosing and saying, I know more than the doctor, they become the enemy. You know, we become enemies. And we're seeing that right now uh, in, in the middle of the COVID pandemic. Doctors have become evil. You know, so some of our um, most brilliant minds in the in the medical community in the research community have become evil um, these evil entities and that happens when there's a lot of distrust you know that happens with misdiagnosis that happens with you know medical gaslighting these are all real things but you know I had to eventually learn and say okay They're not my enemies. You know, yes, I have had doctors tell me that it's, you know, mental health problems, psycho, psychosocial issues. And eventually I had to take what they were saying with a grain of salt and say, okay, well, that's his opinion. But is this leading me somewhere? You know, you know, is, is this, did this kind of touch a nerve with this doctor? You know, and I have had doctors where I see right away when I mention to them my medical history and, and the medications I've been on, a light bulb turns on in their head. And so I know that I'm on to something. And even though they refuse to diagnose at the end of the day or they don't have enough to diagnose, with, diagnose me with at the end of the day, it provides a big hint in the direction that I should be going in. So... You know, I think that helped me, you know, seeing doctors as they're not my enemy. They have their limitations. Right now I'm going through the same thing with with another one of my doctors where I don't want to say she's withholding treatment, but we're sort of at an impasse. And my first initial reaction is to be angry at her and to say, you know, why is she doing this to me? Why is she messing with me like this? Why is she, you know, she's gaslighting me and doing this, that, and the other. And I had to look at it from her perspective. She, There are some treatments that just aren't available in the United States. There are some things that she just can't do because she's risking her medical license and her own credibility. And we do kind of have to see it from their perspective sometimes. And I've been forced to do that. Because my my diagnosis has been delayed. The medication I need has been delayed. My condition has gotten worse. And the only thing that happens when you go in there and you're angry and you're yelling. And I have made a video on this. I forgot what it was called. But I, I know I've made a video on how to approach doctors when you're talking about your condition. And when you go in there and you are ready for a fight and ready to be angry and ready to contradict the doctor and... They're, they're, they're going to listen to you even less and they're going to get in your way even more. So, you know, the best thing to do is to sort of mentally prepare yourself. Yes, it's a very traumatizing experience. I recommend that you have a good therapist on your side. Um, and I've recommended this for all chronically ill people, even though we also have a big distrust with therapists. Um, I have always been a firm believer that you need a therapist by your side because they're going to get you through these ugly um, points 
in your journey to, to find a diagnosis or to find treatment. And my therapists have been very, very helpful. I mean, not all of them have been great, but you know, they, they have helped, um, to keep me sane and to guide me in the right direction sometimes. Um, and also to call me out on my own, um, my own shortcomings as a patient, because as a patient, we have many, many shortcomings, especially because we're so desperate and we're so afraid. We let that kind of get in the way. So, you know, like I said, there, there's a huge difference between self-diagnosis. Self-diagnosis is when you're getting in your own way. Self-advocacy is when you're working with medical professionals to get to where you need to go. Um, and, and the relationship should not be contentious or you should try to keep it as, um, the least contentious you possibly can. Uh, and it's hard and I'm not saying that it isn't, it is very difficult, but it will help you a lot, um, in the future, you know, as you're, as you're moving along to a diagnosis. So that's my video for today. I just wanted to clarify that because it was, it was it was a rough, I had a rough night last night. It just kind of really getting it from, um, from so many in, you know, in my own community. Um, and I will have a video, um, kind of discussing that dynamic further, but, um, I hope this helps some of you out there that still don't have a diagnosis because this is, it's, it's really tricky. It's very, very tricky and we have to stay cool while not feeling very cool at all. So thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Take care.